It's 70 years since Abengoa began as a small engineering company in Seville and now you're one of Spain's biggest multinationals. How would you summarize the business focus of Abengoa? Well, you're totally correct. I mean, we've been in the, in the market for a long period of time, 70 years. And the company started in Seville in 1941. For the first 25 years, the company was growing as a small uh, engineering company in Spain. The second phase of the company was to increase the international exposure. So we were doing that starting by Latin America. And probably the, the last phase, which started in 1995 and last uh, uh, to today, it has been the, the phase where Abengoa has become a global player, a global company, of course, founded in Spain, but a global company, an international multinational company. A company that believes that the world really needs more sustainable solutions for the challenges that we have in front of us. And in Abengoa, we work toward finding those solutions and bringing them to the table. We think that we have a huge uh, challenge ahead of us. And the way that we face it, the solutions that we bring on the table, will determine the future of uh, the world, the future of the activity of the society. We are very encouraged by working on developing green energies based on strong fundamentals, fundamentals of engineering. And that's what we do in Abengoa today. You have a focus on renewable energies. So which of these renewables has the greatest potential going forward? Well, I think that uh, the game is not uh, who is going to be the winner. I don't think that there's going to be a winner in this game. The challenge is huge. Over the next 30 years, we're going to bring 3 billion people more to the Earth. And uh, in addition to that, the existing 6 billion are going to increase the living standard. Uh, yes, to give you a number, uh, the energy demand uh, over the next 25 years it's going to increase by more than 35%. The number of cars on the road, more than 100%, from the 800 million cars today to more than 1,600. How are we going to resolve that situation? How are we going to resolve that in a sustainable way? I think that the answer is a combination of different energy sources. And what is very clear for us is that more and more the renewable energies, the green energies, are going to be part of that solution. And we believe that there are two over the rest of the alternatives that we have right now. The number one is the concentrated uh, solar power, thermal solar power, and we think that it has a great potential because it has two main characteristics. It's manageable and uh, you can storage, which are two th critical things for any large uh, uh, thermal solar installation. And the second thing is the second generation biofuels. We believe that second generation biofuels are the answer to a lot of the problems that we have because it combines a few things. Number one, you can use all the existing infrastructure that we have created over one century for distribution of fuels. Number two, that fuel can be used by 100% of the cars that will be on the road by 2015. And number three, cellulosic ethanol, cellulosic uh, biofuels will not depend on food for the production. So if you combine those three things, I think that thermal solar plus biofuel will be the closer to make a disruption in the renewable markets in the short term. So where do water and recycling fit into the picture? Well, we're going to have more people drinking more water, needing more water for agriculture. We're going to have more people consuming more goods, therefore generating more industrial wastes. How are we going to resolve that? And we think that we're going to need more solutions for desalinating water, and we're going to need more solutions for recycling industrial wastes. And because of that, we have been working during the last year to build one of the largest uh, European uh, industrial recyclers uh, uh, in the market. And we think that as we move forward, we're going to see more and more requirements by governments in terms of environmental concerns on how to deal with the industrial waste. You cannot, you are not going to be able to just put them on a, a landfill and you will have to treat them properly. And that's what we believe that is going to be happening in the next years. What do you see as the main drivers for Abengoa's future growth? The main driver is, is uh, the need of, for more sustainable solutions. 
And in that uh, framework, we're going to see more thermal solar energy demand. We're going to see more biofuels demands. We're going to see more demand for drinking water, for desalinated water. We're going to see more demand for uh, industrial waste recycling. And that is something that is going to happen in, uh, for sure in the, in, in the future years. Now, we think that for Avengo, it's very important to maintain the technological edge so that we can really provide uh, talented solutions to the, to the problem. And don't forget that all those infrastructures, all those good ideas will require strong, solid, and reliable engineering capabilities to build them. So that's where Avengoa fits into the picture. So what then will be your financing strategy going forward? Well, today we have a, what we consider to be a good combination of, in, in our balance sheet. We have a combination of bank debt, a high yield convertible bonds, with an average cost of 6.5%, and we feel comfortable at that stage. However, we think that going forward, uh, our strategy is to deleverage the balance sheet of the company. So we are going to be working in that direction to reduce the uh, gross debt at corporate level that we have in the company. We have supported the growth that we have experienced in the last year, taking advantage of the market conditions, and from now on, we're going to be more active in rotating the assets of the company, considering the quality of the assets that we have in the company and the quality of the business division that we have. Probably also we'll be joining uh, with partners in our divisions to develop that financial uh, strategy. Let's turn to good corporate governance. What's the key for making it effective in your view? I think that the key is, is, is to make sure that you understand that this is not an option. I mean, there is no two ways. There is only one way, and this is to be uh, very uh, uh, strong on corporate governance. Corporate governance is not about policies, it's not about awards, it's not about uh, evaluations from external. Those are the consequences of what you are doing in the company every single day. So corporate governance is a commitment. It's a commitment with your employees, it's a commitment with your shareholders, it's a commitment with your customers. And it implies that you have to keep that in mind every single day for the vision that you have on the company, the strategy that you have, every single tactical movement that you do, or any decision. is everywhere, every day in the company. If you don't understand corporate governance like that, you will miss it. And of course, you're active in the promotion of the Focus Abengoa Foundation. Tell us more about that. That's uh, a very important uh, uh, part of our strategy. We believe that we have been very lucky by being able to develop our activity in certain communities and our foundation, Focus Avengoa, is the channel that we use to collaborate with the local communities and bring them back some of the richness that we have created by developing our activities there. We think that is a must, that is a commitment that we have and you can be sure that in the future we are going to continue supporting the foundation as we have done up to now. Manuel Sanchez Ortega, thank you. Thank you very much.